Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and we're going to talk about just some thoughts and observations about being being the point guy. Uh, I was out LARPing with some friends uh, recently doing some training, and, uh, and I got assigned to point for that, that duration or whatever, and uh, I'm out there walking point, and I just I had some thoughts, so that's what this video is about. So my main, my main thought uh, from, from being on point is, you know, you need to move a lot slower than you think, right? So we're talking about rural, jungle, whatever patrolling here. It probably applies to urban too, but this was in a rural context, right? Because when you're on point, what's your main job? Your main job is to make sure your whole team doesn't walk into something that gets them killed, right? Uh, be that, you know, some like mines or primarily I'm thinking about bad guys, right? Or maybe like air assets or, or whatever. Don't take the team somewhere that will make them dead, right? That, that's your primary job, right? Front security, don't go anywhere, stupid. Now, there's different ways to do this and throughout history. Uh, John Poole, for example, suggests that point needs to be run by two people, you know, like a buddy team up on point there. You can read more about that in, uh, I think the last 100 yards is where he covers that, uh, which is an interesting concept and, and I think it honestly is deserving of some thought. But, uh, you know, traditionally in America, right, we, want, we, we run one point guy, right? That's what we do. And, and so when you're in point, you're basically looking at 180 degree security, right, to where is my team going to make sure that nothing in this plane of 180 degrees that we're gonna walk into and, and get us killed, right? And so you're trying to see everything. Uh, you're trying to see everything all at once, and that's, of course, diff very difficult to do, right? Because you want to make sure you don't step on something, like a booby trap or whatever that's right up here. You want to make sure there's, there isn't like some position, you know, 100, 150 yards out that where someone's going to take a shot at us, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like, there's just seeing everything. And if you're running point, you don't want to move faster than you can see. And, and in general, most of us are, tend to move faster than we can see. Even when you're walking uh, or when you're driving especially, right, you're moving faster than you can see. When you're driving, right, your, your vision is usually just narrowed in on, on your lane, right? And then when you change lanes, then hopefully, hopefully you're looking before you change lanes, right, or turn or slow down or whatever. Um, but it get, becomes very narrowed, right? Even when you're walking down the street, start thinking about it, like, what can I really see right now? You might be, you know, looking at this person ahead of you or doing some people watching or looking to the door that you're going to or whatever, right? But you're not seeing everything, not even close. And so when you're out patrolling and, and you're with your team, you need to move a lot slower than you think you do. Uh, take your time. And, and that's, if, if, if you're like me, right? That's hard, right? Like in my soul, I'm a, I'm a direct action guy. I want to kick the door in and we're, we're going in here and we're blowing it up and like, like that's like where I want to get there, right? I walk fast and I get annoyed with slow walkers when I'm trying to move places, right? Like point A to point B, let's go. And I don't really have time for the fluff and in between. But when you're on point, that is absolutely not your job. Your first job is to make sure people, you, again, don't get your team dead by walking into something stupid. And that requires seeing. So you need to not outrun your headlights, right? We talk about that with shooting, don't outrun your headlights. Um, if you haven't heard that phrase before, this is a phrase meaning if you're moving faster than you can see and take in information, then, then that's not good, right? If you're shooting faster than you can absorb the information of what you're shooting, again, not good. Same thing applies on point, right? We need to see and you can't move faster than you can see. And again, that means you might cover like it might take you like 30 seconds to cover 10 yards. I mean, that, that, it could take that long, right? It could be slower than that. Like you need, to, yeah, we're trying to get somewhere or whatever, and we're, we're out patrolling for a reason, moving from point A to point B for a reason, but especially, you know, as, as secure, or excuse me, threat levels are heightened, right? We need to slow down. If you look back at like Vietnam era kind of patrolling, sometimes these guys would take like all day, like eight, 10, 12 hours, 16 hours, to patrol like 100 yards, right? And that, sound, that sounds insane, right? But again, if you're traveling uh, through really thick jungle and you're trying not to move faster than you can see, right, that, that, that can happen. So I just want you to think about that. Like there's no such thing as actually moving too slow. It might sound silly, but there's no such thing as actually moving too slow because what you're trying to do is you're trying to move as fast as you can see. 
and you're seeing is what's gonna be the main hold up there. So that, that's thought number one. Don't move faster than you can see. You need to slow way down. Two is just about general route selection. Right now, you have a, a pre-planned route, hopefully, uh, on a map or something before you're going out LARPing with the boys. But uh, I'm talking about like a, a micro-terrain route, meaning like, okay, you know, we're trying to get from here to there and this is the general path we're gonna take. But as the point man, especially if you're in file formation, uh, you know, just like a line in school, if you don't know what file formation is, right? Um, and you're moving from A to B, you choosing where to step and where to go is gonna lead the rest of the team there, right? So if you uh, have a choice between, I mean, this is ob plainly obvious, right? But like walking down the middle of a road or walking through a wood line, right? You wanna choose the wood line. And it's often more subtle than that, but it's like, well, there's kind of a clump of trees here and a clump of trees there, and there's a solid wood line here. And so if I kind of cut down the middle right there and weave around that tree and then, and then under that one over there, that will allow the team to be the most concealed from all directions as we move. Right, and so again, it's a lot of information on point. This is why you know in Vietnam it kind of had like this mystical concept of, of a good point man, because there's just a lot of information you're trying to take in. You're trying to not get us dead, and you're trying to pick a route to help conceal the patrol as well. And in my ramshackle amateur opinion, those are your two main jobs. Right? Don't walk us into anything stupid. Primary job number one. Secondary job make sure steps, pick a good route so that as other people follow you, the team can stay concealed as a whole, right? And sometimes that means just walking on the edge of a wood line. Sometimes that means going into the woods and walking there, right? Like it all just depends. Uh, I've found that, you know, for Minuteman type stuff, the formations we're going to use the most are file. Uh, we use that one a lot, actually. Uh, wedge and then online, you know, for when the, when the pew pews start, right? Those three, I mean, we're talking, and maybe like double column, okay, I guess double column, so four, um, for wider paths or roads or whatever. But those four formations is like 98, 99% of Minuteman patrolling, in my amateur ramshackle opinion, okay? And file probably takes up like at least half of that, um, a lot. Like even in formations where, well, in big army, this would be like a wedge, right? And when I'm out in an open field, yeah, we're gonna wedge out, right? But a lot of times, like I tell you what, I have used file uh, in an open field because there was a hill here and we were trying to move around this hill and there's someone over here that we were trying to avoid being observed by. And so we got in file because we could, we could just follow the leader and cut around this hill uh, so that we weren't observed, right? And so like that, that's a very applicable place for file. And I think as Americans, we probably underutilize file and uh, just, just some food for thought. So as a point man, when you're in file formation, you know, again, where you're stepping is where the rest of the team's gonna step, right? Where you're gonna go, the rest of the team's gonna go. So if you can pick a good path through it, then the rest of your team can follow and stay maximally concealed, which as an American Minute Man is gonna be very important because again, you don't have overwhelming firepower, stealth is your security. We could probably make a whole video about that, et cetera, et cetera. So those are my thoughts uh, from Running Point the other day. I, I hope that's helpful. I hope that gives you something to think about. Uh, if you have some other additional thoughts, please enlighten us uh, because it's always, it's always good to share information. Do brave deeds and endure.